Precious Father, we praise and appreciate you. We acknowledge you in our lives for transporting, uh, transporting us to this point in this year and in our lives. We're asking, O oh God, that as we are all present before you today, you will speak from the depth of your heart to us and change our lives and give us the strength to continue on this journey to heaven in Jesus' name. Bless everyone today, O oh God. And as your people give honor to your word and they listen to your word, any problem, any yoke in their life, the word of God will break all those yokes and you release your people to their destiny in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we are looking at an important message, which is titled, The Covenant of Acceptable Service Unto God. The Covenant of Acceptable Service Unto God. Now, at such a time like this, we need to reflect on the way we have been, you know, led thus far by the Almighty God spiritually. And we also need to reflect on our work with the Almighty God. And we need to now project into the future. What does the future hold? Do we want to continue in the same trend by which the Lord has been helping us? us to be able to make it to heaven. At such a time like this, in the life of the children of Israel, because our main text is going to be found in Joshua chapter 24, Bible students will immediately remember that that was the final chapter of the book of Joshua, a kind of validatory message of Joshua the man of God, that militant man, Abraham was a family man. Moses was a priest. But this man was a military man and also a faithful man to the Almighty God. He won so many battles for the Lord with children of Israel behind him and serving the Lord along with him. And it was very close to the time of his departure here from earth. And he now felt that there was a need for him to call all the leaders of the nation and to tell them that, look, this is how far the Lord has led us. But then the Lord has not forsaken us. We are not going on vacation with the Lord. At this point, in fact, we need to refire so that we can serve the Lord the more. So please come along with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1, uh, sorry, chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 1. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwell on the other side of the floor. In old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they serve other gods. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to advance three points in this message of today. Number one is the fresh recollection of the history of their redemption. Fresh recollection of the history of their redemption. That's point number one. And then we are also going to look at firm recommitment. That's point number two. Firm recommitment with her for revealed responsibility. Firm recommitment with her for revealed responsibility. And point number three, we'll look at final rededication towards heavenly home going for rest and rewards. Final redirection towards heavenly home going for rest and rewards. Let's look at point number one. And that is fresh recollection of the history of their redemption. Now back to the book of Joshua chapter 24. Reading from verse 3 now. In that verse 3, it, it reminded them of, you know, the history of their fathers. 
Let's look at verse 2. Let's back up to verse 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwell on the other side of the flood in old time. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. That was the beginning of the genealogy of the Israelites. They were not born from heaven as angels, as believers, are born again. The same thing with everybody that comes through the coming together of a man and a woman. You are not automatically born as a child of God. You are born a sinner. But then there will be a point in your life when you look at it that sin angers God. Sin separates you from the almighty God. And sin will eventually damn you in heaven. And you try all you can to be able to free yourself from sin. But you find it difficult. And you now call upon the Lord to show mercy to you, confessing your sins, repenting of those sins, and turning your, your back to the sins, and asking for the grace of God to continue. And on that day, Christ comes into your hand and gives you the power to go and sin no more. That is what we call conversion or what we call consecration. And you can see here, he said, in the old times, your fathers were serving idols. But the Lord, in verse 3, and I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the floor. I took him out of idolatry. So that is what we call salvation. And you must be taken out of idolatry, of worldliness, of sin, before you can make it to heaven. Because Jesus Christ himself said, except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's, that, that was their own, Abraham's own experience of being born again. As you can see that in Genesis chapter 12. You see, I brought Abraham and uh, from, I brought, I brought your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied the seed. Praise God. And for those who have given their life to Christ, you will confirm this experience of Abraham that the day you give your life to Christ is a turning point, not only for spiritual experiences, even for blessing. People who gave their life to the Lord, they have this uniform testimony that the day they encounter the Lord, their life changed, not only in morals, not only in living a sinless life, but also in blessing. Anything they laid their hands upon to do always pro prospered from that turning point. And you can see what the sinners are missing if they fail to give their life to the Lord. And that's why I'm encouraging you. If you have not given your life to Christ, you are missing out. The Lord is waiting for you. Take the, the step. You have nothing to lose, but you have all things to gain. What will you lose? You lose your sin. You lose maybe alcohol. You lose cigarettes. Good readings to bad rubbish. But then you gain everything in the Lord Jesus Christ. So since the time that Abraham gave his, his life to the Lord, the Lord brought him from idolatry. He brought him into prosperity. And so will it happen in your life in Jesus' name. But if your experience is different, you can call upon the name of the Lord, the God of Jabez, who changed the life of Jabez. That God will change your life in Jesus' name. We are serving a loving and caring God. We are serving a good and marvelous God. When you come to him, he will be blessing. And the blessing of the Lord will not leave you in Jesus' name. And then he said, and he led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied the seed. You will be multiplied in Jesus' name. And then he gave him Isaac and gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau. And I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess him. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. Praise God. When I was reading this passage of the scriptures, he thought, you know, I was looking at God. You gave Esau a land, but then you led the children of Israel to Egypt. Why did you do that? But God has a plan. I don't know what difficulty you may be going through. Say, but God, I'm serving you. Look at the Esau. Who is not serving you? You have settled in. She has got married. She's got children. She's got um, no property. She's, she's got car. But look at me here. I'm serving you faithfully. Wait. The end of the righteous is always wonderful. 
your end will be greater than the beginning. Eyes have not seen, ears have never heard, it has never crossed the mind of men. The great things that God has in store for his children, your future is bright. The Lord will bless you. So, though Jacob and his children, they descended to Egypt, but at the time the Lord brought them out by a mighty powerful hand. And that God is still alive. He will bring you out in Jesus' name. So we see here that the Lord, no, uh, Joshua was recounting the history of the children of Israel and telling them at the beginning was God in your life, in our genealogy, in our family. At the beginning was God. Our success was not behind God or was not beside God, was not outside God. Therefore, remember where you started from. Abraham was called. He lived a righteous life. He left idolatry. And you too, I'm challenging you, he was telling them that you too also make a personal decision to follow the Lord. The Lord that did not fail Abraham, the Lord that did not fail Moses, is still the same God. If you stick to him, he will not fail you in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God that, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured that sin who is invisible. Praise the Lord. Moses was adopted by the daughter of Pharaoh, being found by the riverside, by the waterside. And because that daughter did not have a child, and Moses being adopted by the daughter of Pharaoh, that means automatically, since they do, in those days, they would not allow a woman to be the queen or whatever, or to be the sovereign, you know, uh, lord of the whole of Egypt, he would have fallen to the portion of Moses to become the, you know, another pharaoh, the next pharaoh, instead of, you know, a pharaoh's daughter. But Moses realized that, no, I don't belong here. I'm an Hebrew man. I remember Abraham, our father, who forsook, who forsook idolatry. I cannot be a king over all these idolatrous people. If not, they'll be feeding me with food meant for idol and all of that. And then, because the Israelites were subservient unto Egypt at that time, he will fall to my path to oppress my own people. No, I'm not going to do that. And I want to challenge you, my brother. To follow the Lord will mean that you have to deny yourself of some rights and some privileges and some opportunities. To follow the Lord. Whatever they are giving you in the office, whatever they are giving you in the community, in the family, if it is idolatrous, if it will mean denying the Lord, if it will mean for you to now begin to point you no know, bad finger to the church of God, to the Bible, to, to the church, I mean, to, 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 to the Christians, and to the Lord Jesus Christ, that thing will be jettisoned. No matter what reward that thing will give you, because what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You cannot give a beautiful lady, you know, the opportunity to your heart in exchange for your soul. Don't give money a space in your hand and throw away the Lord Jesus Christ because they don't spend currency in heaven. Your life is short. Maximum you can live is 200 years. After 200 years comes eternity. If you exchange your salvation, you exchange Christ for money of this world, when you close your eyes in death, you meet your maker. And the Bible says, that the Lord will say to some people, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that walketh iniquity. I pray that that final verdict, which is a terminal verdict, a scary, eternally damning verdict, 
will not come upon you in Jesus' name. But watch the way you tread. What is your priority? What's more important to you? Tell yourself, if any temptation comes your way, if any trial comes your way, which one is greater, my Savior or this opportunity? My Savior or this promotion? My Savior or this job? My Savior or this marriage? To marry this rich man. Rich man, very handsome, has, car, has, has everything, will make your life comfortable for 200 years. But after that, he tells you, church, no way. Nobody goes to church in this my house. Nobody must read Bible. I say, mm, so long, I'm going to be comfortable here. What about your eternity? Moses thought that to deny idol, to deny Egypt, and to give his life to the Lord is more important to him. And I pray in your decision making, may the Holy Spirit help you. You miss an amen there. Yeah. In your decision making, when you get to crossroads of life, May the Holy Spirit help you to take an eternal, eternally wise decision in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14 from verse 26, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, did I make a mistake there? The hate. I think it's the devil that you hate. No, Jesus is not asking you to hate your father like that. What he's saying is that if the love of your father, the love of your mother, those that are dear to you, will contravene the commandment of God, will make you to disobey God, you tell daddy politely, sorry, the Bible doesn't teach me that one. Your mother tells you, this person, I, I was the first wife of your dad, and then I gave back to you, but this other woman, came into your daddy's life and snatched your daddy away from me. So, and this particular woman has given back to three, four, five children for your dad. And you are the only child I have through this man. So you must hate that woman. She is a witch. And she must do this. Don't ever help the, her children. Always curse her. You tell mommy, mama, I love you so much. Thank you for taking good care of me. But I'm a Christian. I can't hate anybody. I can't do that. I will continue to pray. I say, ah, and she start to weep on your neck. You want to do me evil. And if I say, I'm going to reject you. You are not going to be my daughter. You are not going to be my son again. Beg, mama. You can't hate. So the hatred we are talking about is not hatred like that. What he's saying is that any instruction from daddy, from mommy, from anybody important to you, which is contrary to the word of God, Bible says you don't do that. If any man come to me and hurt not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That means there are things for you to just get to see because it's a narrow way that goes to heaven. Last week we were taught about following Christ on the narrow way to heaven. It's a narrow way. He doesn't take you on too many things. He will not take you on sin. He will not take you on pride. He will not take you on alcohol. It will not take you on drug. It will not take you on immorality. And Jesus Christ is saying, whosoever will not forsake all these things, these things that will cause sin, he says, he cannot be my disciple. So you must weigh your priorities and take the right decision. I pray to you, I pray to God, once again, on your behalf, you always take the right decision in Jesus' name. And it says, whosoever will follow me, it says in verse 28, for which of you intended to build a tower, sit that not down first, and counter the cost. Abraham counted the cost. Moses counted the cost. These were the patriots of faith that Joshua was alluded to. He said, They've made their own time. And may I, please, please, let's look up here. Our younger generation, may I also tell you, we are fathers of faith. We equally have some senior brothers in the faith who have 
lay down their life to serve the Lord. They have shown us the example. But a time is coming when those people will have to leave the scene. Abraham did not live forever. Moses, though a wonderful leader, did not live forever. Joshua himself was about to die at this time when he was calling them to reckoning. Mean telling them that I'm going to very soon leave you in this, on the scene. You will now be the people, the Joshua's, the Abraham's, the Moses of your own time. And we are serving the Lord with all our hearts. Follow suit. Resemble Abraham. Leave idolatry. Be like Moses. He forsook you know, the, the throne of Egypt and serve the Lord. You also, you serve the Lord. And my younger generation, you will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. And he's now saying, he will come at some cost. He said, for which of you intending to build a tower? What's the tower we're talking about? Tower of salvation. Tower of following the Lord to the end. Tower of living a righteous life. Tower of obeying the Lord at whatever cost. Which of you intending to build a tower? Sit that not down first and counted the cost. Whether he have sufficient to finish it, less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish, I pray for you, you will finish well. You will finish powerfully. You will finish gloriously. So you will not be like this foolish person. How many people have decided, to, oh, I have decided to follow Jesus. They will dance their way. They will show energy. They will show enthusiasm in the church. But what happened between Sunday and the following Sunday? What happens a year after that? What happens in your mid-years? And our elderly brothers and sisters and mamas and our papas in this church, how will you end? What will happen towards the end of your life? For Joshua, he was, death was staring him in the face. And he challenged the children of Israel. And the Lord is challenging you. How far do you want to go with Jesus? How far? It's a lifetime commitment. He said, count the cost. And he now says, in verse 31, or oh, what king? You are that king that we're talking about now. Going to make war against another king. You want to make war against the flesh. You want to make war against the devil. You want to make war against the world. You want to make war against corruption of this world. We will not sit down first and consult him. Whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that commit against him. And I pray you'll be able to meet all the vicissitudes of life and you'll come out victorious in Jesus' name. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Lord will strengthen you. His grace is sufficient for you. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 7. But what things were gained to me, this was Paul the Apostle as, as well, at the inception of his ministry, when he needed to start his race with the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, those things that were gained to me, the position, you know, Paul was very erudite, a great scholar, an analytical barrister. If you want to know the smartness of Paul, please, I challenge you, go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, chapter 23, and you see the power of oratory and the power of argument of a lawyer in that man. But he said, though I was taught by Professor Gamaliel, the greatest erudite scholar of that time, he said, what things were gained unto me? Those are counter laws for Christ. Yea, and brethren, there will be some legitimate things you will, you will have to count loss for Christ. Our young people, there will be some legitimate things you abandon for Jesus. In fact, your friends will tell you, are you being crazy now? This is a scholarship. And because this scholarship is being offered by the brewery, where they brew wine and, and something, for you to go and study in Cambridge and have a master's and have a PhD. But you are not telling me that because it comes from brewery, you are not going, are you being crazy now? Seriously? You tell them, oh yes, seriously. 
Because by the grace of God, the devil will not pay your scholarship. Did you hear that? God Almighty will take care of his own children. Let that scholarship go and see if God will not supply. And that was why Paul the Apostle was confident in God. He said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That was, that was why Paul says, all things that were gained unto me, I counted them but Lord. Because I want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some crossroads of your life that you have to take a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord will always reward the faithful. He will not leave you unrewarded in Jesus' name. And he says, I count all things but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. May you win Christ in Jesus' name. You can lose every other thing. Please win Christ. Please win Christ. Because once you win Christ, you are won all. There's a saying in my place, among the fishermen, they say, wise fisherman will hold the head of a fish. You want to catch a fish from the river, you hold the head. But the unwise one will hold the head, I mean, will hold the, 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 the uh, fish by the tail. Praise God. Some people don't understand some of my local analogies. When you hold the fish by the tail, because all his body is full of, you know, sting, stingy uh, or stingy things, things, the thing will just pour. It will just, you know, pin, pinch you with the fins, and then it's gone. But by the time you hold it by the head, because it breathes through the gill, and then you have closed the gill, you are suffocating it, you have held it tight, you may be making, but then you have grabbed it, you have grabbed it. And what I'm saying is that Christ is the head. Hold the head. Once you hold the head, you, are, you make it to heaven. You will not only make it to heaven, you will make it on earth. Don't let anybody deceive you that it's by corruption you will make it. No, your money will not come through corruption. The Lord will enrich your life, not through corruption, not through evil, but you will make it in the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Paul, the apostle, never lost. That man, just a single man, in many theological schools and universities today, his books that he wrote, they are still being studied. And people are getting professorial you know, titles from his study. Just a single man. Why? Because he made a decision to follow the Lord. And I want to challenge you. Your life must challenge the generation to come behind you. Don't live a careless life. You are not just living for yourself. People are watching you. You are the epistle and the book that people read. Remember, if you fall, many people will fall behind you. That's why you must not fall. And I pray to God for you. You will not fall in Jesus' name. Amen. So that was why, you know, Joshua told them the first recollection of the history of their redemption. He said, you remember... The Lord redeemed you. Therefore, be faithful to him. You see? And you'll be able to follow the obedience of faith. That was what Abraham showed us. Obedience of faith. Leave your father's land. Yes, sir. He did not ask, where are you taking me, God? Just followed. Go and slaughter your only begotten son, Isaac, that you waited for for years before you had that child. Yes, sir. Implicitly, his friends must have been telling him, you are, momo, you, are, you are, in fact, they will curse him. It doesn't matter who curses you, so long Heavenly Father blesses you. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Obedience of faith, because he knows, I got this son from the Almighty God. And God, if he asked me to slaughter this son, and I slaughter this son, he's also able to give me a replacement, Isaac. Whatever the Lord is asking from you, it's not too much. The Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. 
Point number two, firm recommitment with heart for reveal responsibility. Firm recommitment with heart, with your heart, not with the head. Many people follow Jesus with their head. You know, there's a difference between following Jesus with the head and following Jesus with the heart. When you follow Jesus with the head, I mean, just with your brain, if, it, if it's not analyt analytically correct, if it's not logical, if it doesn't, you know, make sense, it doesn't follow empirical studies from the greatest professors and philosophers of this world, your head will tell you, don't do it. But your heart will tell you, though I may not see the front, so long my master is leading the way and is holding my hand, I'm ready to forge ahead. I will just follow him. When I see his footstep, I put my footstep there. When I see next his footstep, I put my footstep there. And you arrive safely home in Jesus' name. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart. Family commitment with heart for reveal responsibility. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor. Please look up here. Look at it. See where you are today. The Lord has helped you up to this point. There's nothing you have that you have not been given. God gave you. And that is the reason why you must reflect. The Lord, you know, Joshua told the people, he said, God has given you a land for which you did not labor. All the messes that the Lord has shown you. Look at it. You have children. How many women married during your time in your village and had no child? And the Lord who has given you those children, he will provide you with food to take care of those children. So when things are a bit challenging and hard, you say, God, what will my children eat? And you start talking rubbish to God. Don't do that. The Lord who gave you the children will give you the money to clothe those children. Some people may say amen there. The Lord gave you a job. And one manager is threatening you, wanting to sack you, make a problem for you, making life difficult for you. Who gave you the job? Is it not God Almighty? Eh? You report that manager to God, not for God to kill him. What do you pray for such managers? May God promote him, promotion that comes with transfer, so that he's happy, he's happily leaving you. And you are happily staying on the job. Do you know how to pray for such people now? Don't curse them. Some other ministry will tell you, tell them, fall and die. In the name of Jesus, fall and die. No, don't do that. May God promote him. Promotion with double package, with transfer. So that he will go his own way and you can stay and enjoy your life. In Jesus' name. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. And I've given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you built not, and ye dwell in them of the vineyards and the oliviers which ye planted not to eat, not do ye eat. You did not plant those, those, those vineyards, but then the Lord gave you to eat. And you see the magnanimity of the Almighty God, the mercy of God. And the Lord will show mercy to somebody today in Jesus' name. In our says in verse 14, because of the goodness of God, because of the mercy of God, whatever goodness the Lord brings into your life is for you to serve him. In our says, now therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And serve him in sincerity and in truth. Don't play a game with God. Don't cut corners with the almighty God. Joshua said, Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And I pray you will serve the Lord in sincerity in Jesus' name. You will not only serve God in our presence here when everybody can see you. Behind your curtain, in your room, at home, even in your place of work, 
May you serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth in Jesus' name. Don't cut corners. Those who cut corners, corners always cut them. Serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. And he will be with you in Jesus' name. And then he now says, put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. What? No. Uh, Joshua was telling them is that be very sincere with God. Serve God with your heart. Don't straddle. Even on the motorway, vehicles that straddle, they always cause accidents. If you're a Christian, be a Christian. If you are a man of the world, let us know you're a man of the world. Be very honest, be sincere in serving the Lord, be faithful, be obedient, be loyal, be true. And he was challenging them. There are four gods to, to talk about here. We have the, the Chaldean, the, the, the Chaldeans uh, God, the worship, you know, the Chaldeans, the, the, the worship idols. That was where Abraham was taken from. He said, is that the God you want to serve? God that did not pay Abraham? Abraham had to abandon that God to serve the living and the true God. We also have the gods of the Egyptians. Their own gods are very many. Do you know that the cow that the Lord had given to man to slaughter and to eat? Egyptians don't slaughter cow. They don't eat cow. Because they serve the cow. They serve the animals. So is he a cow that you want to serve? We'll challenge you then. Or the gods of the Amorites among whom you dwell. For he now says, there's the God that we call Jehovah. The one who parted the Red Sea. The one who made the children of, of Israel to walk on the dry, dry land. The one who made the ground to open and swallow the enemies of God. The, the one who plagued the Egyptians with ten great plagues. And he said, let my people go. Eventually, they surrendered. They had to let the people of God go. He said, is it that God you want to serve? Or the God of idols? And I'm challenging us today, which God do you want to serve? The God of money? The God of riches? The God of whatever, music? Some people, the only thing that will not make them to give their life to the Lord is that they still love the music of the world. And they know the latest music. And they follow the trend of the music and the fashions of this world. What is going to make you to, fall, to forget the Lord Jesus Christ, make sure that you make up your mind. Because, you know, Joshua here, he challenged the people that they should make up their mind and serve the living God, the true God, and not to serve the God of the idols. The gods of idols, you will not serve in Jesus' name. Back to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 4, in verse 16. And the people answered, and I pray you will answer the same way. And said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord. Can you help me tell your neighbor, God forbid, that I should serve a strange God. God forbid that I should forsake the living God. May it be for, so for you in Jesus' name. And he now says, verse 17, for the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And we did, too, uh, did those great things, great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. You know what? A thoughtful man is always a thankful man. If you are thoughtful very well, you will see the finger of God upon your life. I've stood here behind this puppy and I gave a testimony of when I was a small boy. I wasn't even born again. I still remember in those days, I would steal, I would lie, I would fight, I would do those things. But because of the word of God that I was hearing in the church, that they were taking me to that time, not even a true Bible church, believing church, it brought faith in my heart. And in my crisis moment, I call upon God of heaven. And God that answered by fire answered me immediately. In fact, to the point that by the time I now got converted, I became afraid. I said, God, why did you do this to me? 
I wasn't your child at that time. I wasn't born again. I called upon you, you answered me. A thoughtful man is a thankful man. If you are very thoughtful and you are very reflecting, you'll be able to see the mercy of God upon your life. To be able to vow before the Almighty God, this God, I will serve him to the end. And you will serve the Lord to the end in Jesus' name. They now declare, they say, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And we did those great signs in our side and preserved us in all the way we are in we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, we dwell in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, ye cannot serve. He was trying to test the, the veracity and the strongness of their commitment. Praise God. Sometimes some people don't appreciate when, you know, Joshua was a military man, he was a no-nonsense no man. He was not a jocular man, you know, pulling around and playing the buffoon. No. He challenged them. You have just opened your mouth now. You have just said to me, to my hearing, and to the hearing of the God of heaven, that God only you will serve. And I'm challenging you. Do you mean what you are saying? Do you know the implication of the decision you are making today? And they declare, we know what we are saying. We're going to serve the Lord. And I believe we also serve the Lord in Jesus' name. For it says, if you forsake him, verse 20, the Lord, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, you are going to follow me. Nay, but we will serve the Lord. You will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. You can see these people, they were very clear in their mind of the decision they were making for life or for death, we will serve the Lord. In joy and in comfort, we will serve the Lord. When challenges and temptations and trials of life come, we will serve the Lord. So you will serve the Lord in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt which corrupt the word of God. You will not corrupt the word of God in Jesus' name. He said, we are not as many people, he said, there are many out there who call themselves Christians. And when you look closely at their life, you see they are not creating anything. I was told of a, of a particular fellowship. After finishing from fellowship, they all marched to the pub to go and drink alcohol. Fellowship they call. But, this man of God said, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, not in the sight of man. In the sight of God, speak we in Christ. And I pray your integrity, your holiness, your faithfulness will be as sound as this passage of the scripture we have just read in Jesus' name. And in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. There will be some difficult men. Some evil neighbors. Some bad managers. Still follow peace with them. As much as it lies in your hand, live peaceably with all men. Don't be the cause of a fight. Don't be the cause of an argument. Don't be the cause of argument, of debate, or whatever. You know, of rancor, anywhere. Be a man of peace. Jesus Christ himself, our master, is a man of peace. So don't let trouble start from you. Follow peace with all men. And holiness. Not holiness to men, but holiness in your heart to the almighty God. Not holiness in paper. They ask workers to film, tell me the Christian experiences you have, save, sanctify Holy Spirit, and baptize the Holy Spirit. They take everything. But I'm asking you, are you sanctified? Are you made holy? Are you washed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. No man shall say the Lord. 
Hebrews chapter 12 again, verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. What's that kingdom? Heaven. The street of gold. The presence of the Almighty God, where Jesus will be the light day and night. We receiving the kingdom which cannot be, be moved. Let us have grace. Grace upon your life. Some people miss that prayer. Grace upon your life. He said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. May you serve God acceptably in Jesus' name. And he said, with reverence and godly fear. May the Lord impart reverence of the almighty God, fear of God, and godly fear in your heart in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 1, verse 73, the oath which is swear to our father Abraham, that he will grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. May this be upon your life in Jesus' name. So we can see here Joshua challenging the people for firm recommitment of her to serve the Lord and to face the response. What was the responsibility at their own time? They were fighting the physical war. You know, conquering the Canaanites and the Amorites and all of that. Not tolerating them. What's our own war? The war we are fighting is the war, war, war of soul winning, evangelism, church planting. He said, now that I'm about to die, it doesn't mean that an end has come to warfare with the Amorites and the Ammonites. And may the fire of evangelism and soul winning not die, not die in our church in Jesus' name. We must still continue to, you know, follow the law to bring people into the kingdom of God. And point number three, final redirection towards heavenly homeward for rest and rewards. Final redirection towards heavenly home going for rest and rewards. Brethren, it is appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Every man will die. Leave it or take it. I've seen young, young people, age of 13, when they preach the gospel to them, they look at the person preaching to them. What are you saying? I'm not going to die just now. I don't, I'm not ready for Jesus. Daddy, when I get to your age, I will think about God. Let me enjoy myself first. Who says 13 year old children don't die? Death is a death that every one of us have owed. We've owed death. And when the creditor comes, you know, the creditors of this world, when they come, you say, um, I don't have the money now. Go and come back next week. When death comes, he doesn't hear, come back tomorrow. He comes, he comes. And he will take the soul of that person home. And that's why you must be prepared for the day of your death, and you must also prepare for the rapture. The Lord will keep you holy in Jesus' name. People of old, patriarchs of old, they lived in different ages. You know, we were told that, um, you know, Moses died at the age of 120. You see, Abraham, maybe at the age of uh, 170, 175. Aaron, at the age of 123. And in, in biblical statistics, I was surprised when I noticed, or when I saw, that Joseph died at the age of 110. And Aaron also died, I'm sorry, Joshua died at the age of 110. And jo Joseph had already told them, by the time you people are living, you must exhume my skeleton and take it and bury me in the promised land. These were people who had faith. Though they knew that they, they were not going to go to the promised land, but he knew that there's a promised land coming. And that's the way you will believe about heaven in Jesus' name. So that all you do, you do it with eternity in view, with heaven in view. So this man faced death. Clearly, he was very real about death. And many people today, when you talk about, no, 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 don't bring the subject to that. May I not die in Jesus' name? Oh. Somebody would die. <laughs> if 
people would die, would die. As I'm talking to you now, between money and this time, some thousands, if not millions of people have died somewhere in the world. Talk about the subject of death because it's a reality. Joshua talked about death here. You see? And he told the people, I've served the Lord faithfully. I remembered 12, uh, uh, no, spies were sent to go and view the Canaan land. And 10 were unfaithful. And they confessed negative. They said, we're not able. We're just grasshopper before them. But stood in my integrity. And, and I said, let us rise up and go and conquer the land Im immediately. Because we are well able. And that same, that same vigor, that same determination, that same consecration and commitment to follow the Lord closely is still in my heart. Though I'm very close to death, in fact, you know that they should have carried him to, he should have gone to Shiloh for this meeting. But he decided to come to Shechem because he was frail. He couldn't move too far anymore. They made the arrangement for him to, and when I was looking at it, Shechem was so important. That was the first place where Abraham, we were told that Abraham, you know, uh, laid his head. He slept in, in, in that particular Shechem. And I was told again in Genesis chapter 35 that Jacob at the time, he called for national revival among his family members. He said, all your earrings and all your idols, bring all of them. And he buried it at the oak in, Se in Shechem there. And there was no other good place to have this glorious solemn meeting of rededication and ref refreshment of covenant with the Almighty God other than Shechem in that place. And do you know, one thing again that I saw about Shechem was that it was about 500 years from those two hills where Joshua was asked to, there was, you know, curse on one hill and blessing on the other hill. And he brought them to make a consecration for the Almighty God that they will serve the Lord. And he said, if you don't serve the Lord, the curse upon this, this, this particular mountain will come upon you. That's about 500 years. That was where Shechem was, was planted. And that was where, so it was not an accident. There was a kind of God's finger in it so that the children of Israel will come and dedicate their life. And you know Shechem is in the northern part around you know, Samaria because that place was where the Lord Jesus Christ, in fact, that was where Jacob built a well. And when Jesus was tired in John chapter 4, that was where he was leaning and resting. I said, go and buy me food. And before, you know, the disciples came back, he was now talking to a woman, trying to lead her to the Lord. And the woman was even arguing, eh? are you greater than our father Jacob that dug this well? He doesn't know that. She didn't know that this was the God of gods and the King of kings that she was talking to. But why am I bringing all of this? This man faced the reality of death very squarely. And he faced it with sincerity. And I want to appeal again to our aged mothers and fathers. You are getting closer home than before. Tread carefully. That somebody is telling all history. When I was much younger, I was very zealous in evangelism. I loved the Lord very passionately. I always say, I arrange, I, I, you know, I attend all prayer meetings. No retreat. We meet me at home. I will be at the retreat. Camp. What about now? What about now? This man, as a young man, he stood courageously for the Almighty God. He said, Let's go up at once to go and conquer the land. And I very close to his death, was he strong for the Lord. He's asked for me and my heart will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to tell yourself, ask for me and my house we will serve the Lord. You will serve the Lord to the end in Jesus' name. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God, in verse 24, we will serve and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people, I love this man. He doesn't take, you know, a kind of genuflecting or a kind of, you know, wishy-washy kind of con conviction. He made a covenant with them on that day and set them a statue and an ordinance. He wrote it down, documented it as like a kind of contract. You come and sign. Will you follow the Lord? <laughs> and they said, because he was a militant man. He doesn't joke around. Now, he, he now said, he made an ordinance in, in Shechem 
And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law and took a great stone and set it off there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord, which he spake unto us. It shall be therefore a, a, a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man unto his inheritance. And as you are finishing the service today, may you depart your inheritance. Inheritance in Jesus, in Jesus' name. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. Reality of death. Can you see? Being 110 years old, just like exactly the same age of Joseph. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance, in Timnad, Sarah. And I pray, when you close your eyes in death, your inheritance is waiting for you in heaven. And you will not miss your inheritance. And your inheritance will not miss you in Jesus' name. They buried Joshua in his inheritance, in Timnad, Sarah, which is in Mount Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gage. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outly overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel. I pray that through your life, hundreds and thousands of people will come and serve the Lord in Jesus' name. That in heaven, someone will walk up to you. Ah, Brother Joseph, thank you so much for your encouragement. Thank you for leading me to the Lord. I've made it. So you made it as well. And you hug each other. So will it be in Jesus' name. May your life influence many people in Jesus' name. Don't just be a so-so Christian. You ask some people, what are your plans? Pastor, what do you mean? Oh, ah, my plan is that by, by, God's, by God's grace. God's grace alone. This year, 2024, I'm going to have my second property. So that's all your plan. This time, what's your plan by the grace of God? Ah, Pastor, thank you so much for asking me. In fact, this year coming, I must marry you. I must marry. I must do my wedding. All these things are good. But that's a bigger plan, a bigger purpose for which you are created. You're, you are not a goat. Goats have, they don't have plan. Goats in the village where we came from, when the goats wake up in the morning, who we'll just shake his, his head, you know, he has a very big uh, ear. And then he will scratch the ground, boom, 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 and shrek. And then he's looking for the next grass to eat. And he'll go and sleep in the night. If he meets a male child, male goat, they will meet, and then we'll have baby goat. That's all about animal. And then he will, he will go again and sleep, wake up the, morning, for the following morning, take the airs, and that's how some people are living. They don't have gold for life. Your goal must be, I want to impact the few people that have come across this narrow way to heaven. And so will be your life in Jesus' name. Joshua impacted the life of the people that knew him. We were told that the elders that knew him, they said this God was faithful. They said, this man was faithful. This is our leader served the Lord. And he challenged us to serve the Lord. Ah, though he's not here with us, but he must not get, get to heaven and, and he misses me. So they were faithful. And they said, and the people that have outlived Joshua, and I pray that so will be the impact of your life, your Christian living before the Almighty God in Jesus' name. You carry multitudes of people to heaven in Jesus' name. That amen was too cold. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, this is God Almighty talking now, not man. Some people, when you talk about death, they say, God forbid. Ah, God forbid. God forbid. Uh -uh. <laughs> God here. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Can you see? You will soon die. Get ready. I wish 
the Lord will tell me the day I will go. So I can really pray, pray through, pray myself into heaven. God told him, get ready. And these people will rise up and go a warring. I pray that after our Father and the Lord, after our own generation have gone, this church will not become another thing. Yeah. Young people, I need your amen. amen. This church will not become another thing. And it says, these people will go a warring after other gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them. And will forsake me and break my covenant. May we not break the covenant of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. So the Lord is challenging us today to make a fresh covenant with the Almighty God. This is a God that has been good to us. Be good to our fathers. The fathers in the faith, the patriarchs of old, the heroes of faith, the Lord has been good unto them. Think, think about Abraham. Think about Sarah. The, one, the, the people, the family that had children at a very, very old, advanced age. He was faithful to them. In fact, when I was reading my Bible, you know what? Something that scared me. God Almighty, when their enemies were trying to, you know, waylay them, God sent some insects that we call hornets onto them. Hornets are like bees. And started stinging their, their, their enemies. And I'm praying. Every enemy that will trouble your life, that will not make you to serve God, May the Lord send hornets to them. Those hornets will sting them and distract them so that they will not be able to perform the enterprise. Nobody will snatch you away from the Lord in Jesus' name. We are going to rise up and call upon the name of the Lord. Our Father, today is a day of rededication of my life unto you. I've said it over and over, Lord. I'm saying it again to your beautiful, to, to your lovely ear. The Father, I love you. And I will serve you to the end. Come what may. I will forsake the riches of Egypt. Carry my cross and follow the Lord. I will live a holy life. I will be obedient unto you. Make a fresh commitment unto the Lord. Remember, you have only one life. You have only one life. Call upon the Lord and make a rededication of your life. If you have not given your life to Christ, why not now? If you are the type that is playing game with your life, you better stop it. Your life is much, much more precious. The covenant of acceptable service unto God and that Covenant must be acceptable. Please call upon the Lord and offer your life back unto him. Tell, tell the Lord, I will serve you to the end. No looking back, no turning back. The wall behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. Don't know one else. Follow me. I'm going to serve you to the end. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It makes sense. Think of it. See how good God has been good unto you. Look at the blessings the Lord has been giving unto you. Compare the God, the God of the Amorites, the God of the Canaanites, the God of the Egyptians, and compare them with Jehovah. There's no one greater than Jehovah. He's the one that will help you. Fall into the hand of Jehovah and you are safe. A wise man will hold the head of the fish. And Jesus is the head. Hold on to him and all shall be well with you. Let them take everything else away from you, but hold on to Jesus. Hold on to the man of Calvary. Hold on to the Savior. Hold on to the Messiah. Hold on to the soon coming King and the judge of the earth and the heaven. Remember, your Christian decision is a lifetime commitment. Don't look back. Please. 
Don't go sideways. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. We have good examples. We have a good heritage. Abraham, he showed us the example. Moses, he showed us the example. Joshua, he showed us the example. Can you see? Our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul the Apostle, and our Father and the Lord showed us good example. You have no excuse to live a weak life, a defeated life, a divided life, a straddled life. Make a fresh commitment to the Lord, please. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. 